Welcome to Coffee and Correct Grammar. I see we have a comment here in the comment section already, which is awesome. So let us audit this comment together. It's from someone named, it's from an adjective pronoun named irate primate. It says, for the claim and of the cognition. Okay, this is incorrect. If you're going to use a conjunction, what happens on one side of the conjunction has to happen on the other side of the conjunction. Therefore, if you're going to use the full colon after the conjunction, it ha there has to be a space between the, the ampersand and the colon, and the colon has to be tied up against the cognition, the word cognition. So it would say for the claim and for the cognition, because as it stands, the colon is tied up against the ampersand, which stands for for the claim and of the cognition. You understand? So that's the first mistake in there. And then the next one is of knowledge. So there is no lodial. It's missing a lodial. It would be of the knowledge, not of knowledge. At that point, if you were to write it correctly, it would be for the claim and for the cognition of the knowledge. There would be the verb because you have your two points. You've established your geometric level playing field. Then you drop your verb of the thinking in, which would be singular. Hold on a minute. No, since there are two causes, it would be plural. For the claim and for the cognition of the knowledge are. And then it would be with the finite hyphen authenticity, not of. You would not have put an of, you wouldn't put a concern next to a concern. With the sovereign hyphen sensation of liberty. Again, there's a missing lodial. It would be of the liberty with the knowledge by the finite hyphen authenticity. And then the full stop is missing after authenticity. You would have to put a full stop there. Now, some people may say, you know, well, Jason, you're nitpicking there. You know, you're, you're really, that is, I mean, if you don't like to be nitpicked, if you don't like attention to detail, then correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar may not be for you. Because this is the level of intensity. This is the level of energy you have to put into it to be correct. If you're going to make and create and be the authority of your own document contract uh, postal vessel court venue. You have to be correct. As correct as you possibly can be to the level of your skill. There is no laziness. There is no casual correct sentence structure by my knowledge. You have to be on point at all times. And you have to be able to convey this knowledge to another individual, another contract party. You have to be able to educate them as well. Because if you're going to educate someone else, on the mistakes and errors in their grammar, then you yourself better know how to create a correct sentence structure. That's just rule one, rule equal. So thank you, Irate Primate, uh, for that right off the bat grammar lesson. Appreciate you taking the time to uh, participate in this learning venue. Uh, one question that was asked that I remember was about how one would use a um, a word with a particle of negation in it as a fact. Now, as you can, well, on my syntax key, you can see clearly that I have adverb, the word adverb positioned as a fact. I have the word pronoun positioned as a fact. I have the word adjective positioned as a fact. Now, there are a couple different mechanics you can use to position those things as facts correctly, even though there are particles of negation in them. For example, adverb is a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. Adjective is a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. And pronoun, as we all know, if we've watched any 
colon David Eckerwin, colon Miller video is no, no, no. So the way to do that would be, number one, just sick it. Put SIC in brackets after it. And if you don't know what that means, and I know a lot of people out there still don't know what that means, pull up Google right now, type that in. What does SIC mean? And the fiction will give you complete conceptual closure on that. If you're going to use that technique with correct sentence structure, you, of course, would need to create a correct sentence structure, finite mean, for that word. Now, people may ask, why do you use the word finite mean? I've even had some people say, well, David never used the word finite mean, so that must not be correct. No, David did not use the word finite mean. I think he used the word known, K-N-O-W-N. I think. I don't know. But uh, my tutor, the guy that led me to the closure on the grammar, Colin Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tohidi, colon Alpha Rim, uh, he and I developed the word finite mean for a more specific type of closure because the word definition in and of itself, in the fiction, definition means no finite contract. Meaning, that's why there's so many meanings for one word. When you have the word finite hyphen mean, it means that there's a limit to the meaning of the word. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Just like this coffee cup can only be filled with so much coffee, that's the same thing with a word. It's finite, and it has a mean. Finite mean. That's why I use that word. And of course, if down the road, you may find that your finite mean, there's more to it, or you come on, stumble upon some knowledge that you didn't have before, you wouldn't change it. You wouldn't modify it. You would stop and correct the finite mean. And that's the way this works with the humility. Okay, the other technique for uh, using particles of negation in your facts if you choose to do that. Some people will take brackets and put them around the first syllable of the word. For example, in adverb, they would put brackets around the A and the D, and then you would just have the word verb. But for me, that doesn't work because now it's a verb, and we already have a verb. So I think that's confusing. So for the ease of the communication, I just use sick. An adjective, they would put, a, again, the brackets around the A and the D and then just have the adjective. <laughs> Pronoun, I'm not sure how you could bracket that. I just sick it because it's a no, no, no. Because P-R-O means no. When I teach the grammar, I always teach it uh, in such a manner that I teach all three aspects of correct sentence structure. I teach correct sentence structure communication, that's one. Parse, that's two. Syntax, that's three. All together, that makes up the grammar, which is the authority of the whole thing. And I always teach it with an eye towards the student, the learner, the querent, the postulant. I teach it with an eye towards them eventually gaining the knowledge to create their own document contract postal vessel court venues. Using the flag mechanics, using the postal mechanics, using the 12B7 through 12B1 and creating their own correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar claims. That is why I am a stickler for detail and everybody, I don't care who you are, what your name is, how many colons or hyphens you have in your name, you make mistakes. That is not an assumption. I am not making a claim for anyone. That's just a fact. You can look at anyone's work and usually find mistakes. If I drop a contract and I can go over it six times and then put it away, when I come back to it the next day, I will find a mistake. I guess it's just human nature to err is human. Um, that's why it's always nice to have a trusted friend, 
or confidant or comrade that can help you and audit and look at your material with fresh eyes. Now, before people start sending me their documents and stuff like that, I don't do that. I teach the grammar, but I don't audit other people's grammar. Because as it is, I get multitudes of emails with people that want me to syntax their stuff. And, and of course, I would love to help anyone that I can. The problem with it is it wouldn't do any good for me to syntax your papers. Because if you don't know what it is that I've done on your paper and you can't explain it to someone else, at the very least, it's going to be unsuccessful. And at the most, you might get in a lot of trouble. So it's always good to know what you're doing. The first step would be to have a correct claim of the live life with correct grammar on it. Well, actually, that wouldn't have to be the first step. The first step could either be getting the claim of the live life or it could be learning the grammar. For myself, and I would never tell anybody else what they should do, but what I did was I learned the grammar and held off on getting the live life claim as much as I could. And then I got the live life claim after I had learned a certain, I had gained a certain amount of knowledge on correct sentence structure. And then even then when I got my claim of the live life, you know, a few months later I realized, oh man, there's so many mistakes in this. And I had to make a new one. I had to stop and correct. And then actually I made another one after that. Uh, a year later, which is the one I have now, but it, it is, it is, it has its own dictionary on it and it only has facts on it. And, and I'll share a little bit about that with you. When I say my live life claim only has the facts on it, it means that I don't have things like hair color or eye color or height or weight. I don't have any of that stuff on my live life claim. The reason why is because those things change. Those things are fluid. I may weigh 210 pounds today, and then next week I may weigh, you know, two weeks from now I may weigh 195 pounds. My eye color can be brown one day, and it can be green the next day. My hair, obviously, used to be very dark brown. Now it's, I don't know, salt and pepper. The height, we shrink as we grow older. So all the, I don't put things that are changing or fluid on there. I put the facts on my live life claim, like the name, um, my mother's name. I didn't put my father's name because how can anyone really certify who the biological father is? The father's basically a donor. We don't know who that is. I can't prove who it is. So my father's not on there. Only the facts are on there. The GPS location for uh, where I was actually physically birthed into the sea of space in this domain. But I do claim all particles of this vessel from uh, the now space location of the spark of conception. So that's my little dissertation on the claim of the live life. Oh, and people ask, what is the claim of the live life? Claim of the live life is three live life claimants coming together to certify and authorize that you are who you say you are and that you are a live life creature, a live life claimant. It's simple, very simple. And of course, I don't teach those mechanics. I'm just sharing that um, because I think that everyone should have the opportunity to have a claim of the live life. I don't think there should be a price tag on it. I know people, there have been an influx of individuals out there in the public saying things like quantum grammar will never be free and correct sentence structure should never be free and blah, 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 and you should pay for it. That concept only came into the public after Colin David Eiffel and when Colin Miller died. Prior to 2018, it was open source.
says so in Colin David Eifen Win Colin Miller's book, which Colin David Eifen Win Colin Miller and Colin Russell Hyphen J. Colin Gould would take to the seminars that they did. Right? No one ever said ever that there was a fee for learning or using the grammar. And I've been in communication with both gentlemen over the years and never once did either one of them charge me a dime, nor did they ever ask for money, nor did they ever say I couldn't use it or anything like that. So I don't know where people get this idea from. I guess there are certain sectors who are out for their own benefit, perhaps. This is a speculation on my part. I don't know this to be true. Um, it's just speculation. Maybe they just want to make a buck, you know, and there's always people out there that want to make a buck and run a scam. And a good way to do that is to bottleneck something to limit it, to make it seem like there are secret, there's secret stuff that if you want to get in, you have to, you have to pay this, this fee, silver, gold, or whatever it is. And then you'll get into the exclusive club and get the exclusive info and you'll have knowledge that no one else has. Guess what? That is a clear violation of rule one, rule equal. Clear violation of rule one, rule equal. Or as some individuals like to call it, rule one, rule same. You are, when, when one does that, they are tipping the geometric level playing field of contract giving themselves an advantage over those who cannot pay. This is stuff. This is shit that the fiction system uses. Pardon my language. Fiction system uses this technique. That is why I don't affiliate with any other group on here. And um, in the quantum grammar sector, because I see this happening. Everything that I know about correct sentence structures on this YouTube channel for the public. People say the correct sentence structure is being hidden. No, it's not. It's right here on this channel. If you want to take the time to learn it. Free to the public. Right here. What I teach in my confidential workshops, it's all here. There's nothing secret in the workshops. It's all on this channel. How do you syntax your own name? How do you syntax your own name? Well, my own name... Uh, my name on my live life claim is colon Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass period. So that would be 567 567. Position lodeo fact, position lodeo fact. That's how I syntax my name to answer your question. So I rate primate. I guess is asking me to syntax their name and it's the same as mine. It's five, six, seven, five, six, seven. For the Dominic of the D'Angelo, where well, you would actually punctuate your name on the live life claim because it's incorrect sentence structure. Because uh, the nature of the questions that you're asking, uh, Dominic, um, I would guess that you're a beginner. Um, because a uh, basic cognition of correct sentence structure would one could guess that the learner knows that all facts must be positioned. If you're going to use a fact, you have to position it with a positional and a lodial, a five and a six. I'm about 400 hours in. Nice work. I remember, um, hold on a minute. I rate primate is five hours in and they shared a, sentence with us earlier in the chat uh that's a pretty good sentence for being five hours in irate primate <laughs> congratulations um oh 400 hours in I, I heard people say well you need at least 200 hours of study to get anywhere well when i was at 200 hours i didn't know anything I sucked at it and I thought I was a slow learner. It took me a thousand hours before I could even use this stuff. And even then I didn't have closure on it. 
And now probably if I had to guess, I'm probably at about 11 or 12,000 hours of performance and study, if I had to guess. Because I use it on a daily basis, every single day. Of course, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a, a, one of my videos if I didn't mention that 90% of learning this is psychological. It's all up here. Pretty much. There are certain, I've found, and in, in through these uh, years of teaching, I've found that just about every individual that I've taught, there are certain concepts that have been ingrained or programmed in that are very hard to overcome. Very hard to overcome. That we've, that we've been programmed with in the fiction system. I'm no exception. One of the biggest is the concept of authoritarianism, that one needs permission um, to do this, that, or the third. Is it okay if I do this? Am I allowed to do this? And that mentality must be flipped in order for one to become one's own authority. That doesn't mean that you can go around just making stuff up. Um, for example, in my code dictionary, there's well over a thousand facts in that dictionary. And this doesn't include the thesaurus, because there's also a thesaurus in there and some grammar rules in there. And none of those words are pulled out of thin air. It's all very well researched through parse, through different dictionaries, going back to the orig original nativity root meaning of each word, each particle, and carefully constructing a correct sentence structure, quantum grammar, finite meaning for each fact. So words just aren't pulled out of thin air normally. You just don't go around making stuff up because how can you certify it then? Now you can have... Like, if you were to pull a word out of thin air, um, I don't know, any word you want, like, uh, whatever. If you just choose to make up a word, a contract word, to cover a portion of a contract that you don't, that you cannot articulate, so you and a group of contract parties come up with a word, you invent a word, using parse and things like that. And you could make up a word conceivably if you have, you know, two, three, four, five, six, ten, twenty, a hundred, however many contract parties, and then you all certify it, that would work as certification because everybody in that contract would agree to that finite mean for that word that you made up. But normally that's not how it's done. Does capitalization alone make something one corporate. Uh, I guess, I mean, if you, whatever you want to do with your contract, capitalization has nothing to do in my construct with anything like that. And I do get questions a lot like this from people using like common law or uh, the sovereign movement the free man movement and things like that, they get hung up on this capital letters thing. What's the name of that channel? Uh, there's a channel out there, a gentleman named Ron Lee Stewart, who does great work, by the way. He does a lot of great research. I used to watch some of his stuff years ago. But the thing is with them is they give jurisdiction to the fiction. They'll say, Capital letters mean this or that. And then they will point to a fiction styles manual for their closure. So they are giving authority to their grammar to a fiction styles manual, which is completely different than correct sentence structure. Completely. Has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. When you're creating correct sentence structure, you can use fiction sources to certify, help certify, your meanings but ultimately 
you do not give authority to fiction for your grammar, unless you choose to. I mean, that's a choice. All caps text is not English. M.H. Ta, what is your closure for that? Who is the authority of what you're saying? I'll wait for you to tell me where, what your source is for that knowledge. Because I get questions like this all the time. And people normally point to fiction styles manuals and say, it's saying that all caps is, what is, your, what is the source of what you're saying? You have not given me a source. Please give closure to your source of authority for your claim about all caps. You are the authority. Then why are you speaking in adjective, adverb, verb, pronoun? Why are you speaking in fiction babble then if you are the authority? You are the authority of your construct. That is true. But you're not the authority of my construct. I have a dictionary written in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar that gives closure to why I do what I do in my contracts. And it's the same, it would be the same for anyone else who wants to use correct sentence structure. This is a channel about correct sentence structure. It's not about fiction babble English. I mean, it is in a sense that we show the errors in the grammar, but it's about learning how to position your facts with correctness. For this claimant sensation of the cognition is with this correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant, period. There, I just spoke in correct sentence structure. Your turn. <laughs> I love it when people tell me what I can and cannot do. I get a kick out of it. Let's move on here. If this M-H-T-A-H adjective pronoun uh, individual doesn't have any correct sentence structure, communication, partially syntax, grammar questions, uh, then um, I'll leave that at that and I'll move on to some other topics. So I find that when people come on and they speak like that, I don't see any evidence. I always look at evidence in the way they write what knowledge are they demonstrating that they have knowledge of how to position their facts with correctness? And once I see, I, I can usually tell, number one, what their knowledge level is, and number two, who their teacher was. I can pretty much tell that right off the bat. I am curious to correct sentence structure because it seems to apply It seems to apply to my insistence of living under common law. Do you agree that this would be the suitable grammar to use under common law? Um, again, this is psychological question. Um, you would not use, one would not use correct sentence structure. Uh, when one gains a cognition of correct sentence structure, one would then see that Correct sentence structure is the first, primary, foremost uh, technology above all grammars and things like that. So you would not use it under something because it's a geometric level playing field. Now, you can take elements of common law and translate them into correct sentence structure and use them on your geometric level playing field of contract, but you would not use it under. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you can take bits and pieces from wherever in the fiction and translate it into correct sentence structure as long as it follows those rules of rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, neutrality. I hope that made sense. I just put that M-H-T-A-H fellow or, or whoever it is 
I just took them out because they just go on and on. They don't know. I don't, I don't understand what they're saying. I really don't. When he says speak in syntax, when you speak, you're already speaking in syntax. So perhaps they don't know what syntax is. If you're still watching, you can check out my YouTube channel. I give closure to what syntax is. So then maybe next time or whatever, you can email me and we can have a conversation face to face or something about it. Because if you're saying speak in syntax, you, when you're speaking and making sentences, you are syntaxing. That's what syntax is. <laughs> oh, here's another one for you. For this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the verbalization with the speak of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar with this skill by this claimant, period. What did I just say? I just said that I have the skill to speak using correct sentence structure and correct syntax because that's what it is. It's correct syntax, not fiction babble syntax. Correct syntax. 567, 567, 2, 567, 567, 567, 567, et cetera, et cetera. Cause, concern, verb, possessive, concern, possessive, authority. Full stop. Oh, one more thing uh, since um, it was brought up about common law. One thing that I see uh, some common law folks doing is they will try to mix correct sentence structure with fiction babble. Um, I would never tell someone what they should or shouldn't do. What I will highly recommend and strongly suggest is not doing that. At the very least, it's not going to work. I mean, it might work. I don't know. But my guess is it wouldn't work. And at the most, you could get into trouble with it. Because number one, if you're mixing the two and you're not using the correct mechanics, um, you have just zeroed out all the correct sentence structure on your paper, even your name. Okay? You have to use the flag. You have to use the postal mechanics. The 12B7 through 12B1. And if you don't do that, then, you know, you could run into trouble. That's uh, my suggestion. So if anybody out there has any other grammar questions or if they want to apply for a confidential workshop, uh, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And what I mean by apply for a confidential workshop is that I provide 10 to 15 minute consultations, video consultations via Zoom in order so that I can speak with you if you're interested in a workshop and I can get to know you a little bit. I can, I'm pretty good at vetting people and I can pretty much tell their volition right off the bat. That's why I have to see you so we can level the geometric playing field of contract and speak in a manner that we both comprehend and see if we're both on that geometric level playing field, then whether we can move forward or not with a contract for the workshop. That's just all that's for. And there are no charges and fees. 10 to 15 minutes of my now space and your now space on the geometric level playing field. And then we move forward from there in a the confidential. That's how it works. Thank you for joining me. I don't see any further grammar questions, so I'm going to draw this to a close. Thank you again. See you soon.